Hello guys, this is episode 27 of the radio podcast. We're back for 2018. Hey guys. Hey. Hello. We've got Diora and Tamman here to update us on student council stuff. Uh, in this episode, we talked to Agape. Do you know Agape from yeah, uh, grad 2015? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember? Yeah? Yeah. Well, he, he talks about his uh, life as a professional actor. He's been in, in Supernatural. Oh. He's been in oh, really? Bletchley Circle, San Francisco. I don't know if you've, you've probably seen some posters around. Yeah. But he's in that. He's a regular in that as well. So, wow. yeah, it'll, it's a good interview. Um, so how are things going? They're going good. You know, we're getting a lot of events in and we're hoping to do a lot more. Today we're going to talk about the two that we have. So we have Disney Day and Athletics Day. And okay, so for Disney Day, it's on the 14th of November. And um, there's going to be a trivia at lunch held by Mr. Turpin. There's going to be a donut sale for a dollar donut. And um, we're going to do Wear Your Disney Wear, which is your... Which like is Mickey your, Mouse ears and yeah, stuff like that? Yeah, and like hoodies. And Disney things. owns everything, so you can pretty much wear any pop culture. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> like Marvel, uh, uh, Jim Henson, mm-hmm. uh, what else? Pixar. Yeah. What else do they own? Star Wars. They do own Star Wars also. Yeah. But yeah, just wear anything Disney related. And, or, and if you don't have any of those many options, um, just wear red, white, and black, which are Mickey Mouse colors. Mickey Mouse, it's his 90th anniversary. It is Did his you know 90th that? anniversary. Yeah. yeah, that's why we're hosting it. Yeah. And the, on the 22nd, which is a Thursday, we're going to have Athletics Day which we will be hosting a handball game in the gym at lunch, teachers versus grade 12 students. Uh, you should come out and watch. That will be a great event. And at the same time, we want you guys to dress up in your jerseys, in your uh, any athletic wear. I know the athletics team has new socks, W socks. Those are the greatest. Yeah. And so if you can dress up, come to school with your athletic gear, anything, any sports you play, any, you can even wear your Delview athletic gear, anything you want, just come to school and come watch the game at lunch in the big gym. Cool, so two big spirit days coming up. Excellent. That sounds like fun. Anything else? More things coming. <laughs> just Be excited yeah. for the month of December. It's going to be jam-packed. And oh, yeah. It's going to be jam-packed for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Very good. Well, uh, listen to this episode. It's the first one of the year. We, we've taken so long because Mr. Turpin and I have been so busy with our new course, Innovation mm-hmm. 10. But um, here we are, and we're, we're looking for more people to interview, so there'll be more good ones coming up. Mm-hmm. Thanks for, for you guys to come in and uh, talk about Student Council, and Anytime. have a very good year. High five! Too loud? Check one. You're, two. you're always too loud. Uh, do you need me to say stuff too? Yes, please. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Um, I guess check. Since we're talking to you. Yeah, I guess, yeah, you have to make sure that you can hear me. Um, check one, two, one, two. <laughs> say the exact same thing. <laughs> I'm not creative. State your name. Agape Mgome Zulu. Mgome Zulu. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what I said? I don't remember. Go Mezulu? Go You do say it like one of the best of like any teacher. Yes! Like Nikaj is. He tries very hard. <laughs> he tries hard. Go Mezulu. Go Mezulu. Go Mezulu. Yeah. Go Mezulu. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of how it's spelled too. Oh, yeah, exactly. I think that M N G throws people off because then after that it's pretty simple. It's like M N. So, how does Nikaj say it? Uh, mm. <laughs> I have to try saying my own name really badly. <laughs> Manigome Zulu or something. <laughs> Manigome Zulu. Manigome Zulu. Yeah.
And then, like, throw in the accent there. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, are we good? I think so. Cool. So, uh, we're back. We're back. We're back on the air, so to speak. It's been too long. It's been... <laughs> when, when was our last episode? Uh, Chevy and... Nathan. Nathan. That was ba- a back, while ago. Back in May? Yeah. Yeah, it was back in May. So oh this is gosh. our first podcast of the 2018-2019 school year. That is correct. Very cool. And we've got an oldie coming back to us. But, but a goodie. An oldie. <laughs> no, that, that sounds old. bad. But yeah. An he, alumni. Well, yeah. he is older. He is older. He's older than Chevy and Nathan. Yeah, yeah he's not a kid anymore. No. no. He's working. He's a working actor. A working I, actor. I can drink in the States. <laughs> <laughs> 21 years old, mm-hmm. so he can drink in the States. Yeah. That is old. I guess that is old. Is that your exact age right now? Uh, yeah, I'm 21. I'm turning 22 in about a month and a half, two months. January. Where does the time go? I know. Time flies. January what? 17. Nice. Capricorn. Mm, I'm an Aquarius 28th. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't follow. No. <laughs> I know what I yeah, am. Yeah, that, that's it, right? Yeah, like, I'm a Taurus. But <laughs> mm-hmm. I guess I'm stubborn. <laughs> yeah. You're oh. a Taurus. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't that stubborn. You're, you're a pretty chill teacher. Well, thank you. I don't know about personal life, but... <laughs> I'm stubborn. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, for our listeners who don't know Agape, he graduated class of 2015. Yeah. Uh, upon, well, during his graduation year, he played Seymour in the school production of A Little Shop of Horrors, which I was not a part of because I wasn't here yet. Um, but I watched the DVD. You did? I did. It was terrific. It was, well, it looked terrific. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that much. Mm -hmm. Um, the sound quality on the DVD was poor. Yeah. So, (laughs) so I, I, I can't make a judgment. On how it sounded. The sound quality in person was excellent. Mm. Okay. Mm. It was pretty good. We yeah. recently actually just watched the DVD. Did you? Yeah. Uh, Cyril, Janelle, and I, and like, you know, a few other people. But like, yeah, we just sat down and watched the DVD and just laughed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you do, right? <laughs> yeah. What, so what did you think? Like, in, in terms of uh, production, uh, production values, your oh. own performance... Well, I mean, even looking at the set when it first arrived and when we were doing the production, it was just, like, mind-blowing. I was like, wow, where, where did we get the budget? Like, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, doing it, and, you know, I think we were, I think we were mic'd or something. I don't remember. Yeah, um, I think you were, yeah, from we, what I heard. Yeah, yeah, we must have been mic'd, and, you know, there were speakers, and, you know. You know there were vines all over the stage for, like, I don't know, a good year and a half after that. I really we're still <laughs> cleaning up vines. Really? <laughs> No, yeah, we the I mean they went all out. I yeah, it just it just looked super cool in yeah. person and it sounded awesome. It really did. Yeah, everyone's singing and you know, acting and it was so good. And there was a motorcycle. There was a real motorcycle that That's Chevy cool. was on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that thing was massive. <laughs> I went uh me and my buddy, we went back and we watched our grade twelve musical. <laughs> Which was? On a, on a VHS tape. On oh, yeah. two VHS tapes. Act oh, one on one tape, God. act two on the other. <laughs> it was uh, Bye Bye Birdie. Mm-hmm. And it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were watching it, and I don't want to say that it ruined our experience. Uh-huh. Because at the time, what we thought we were doing was so good. We're like, oh yeah, my goodness, yeah. it's so great, it's so great. And then we go back and watch it, and we're like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> it was awful. And it wasn't... So much of the performances themselves were awful. It was that each scene change was about a three minute blackout. (laughs) And you could, (laughs) we actually had stage crew with power tools in our scene changes. Oh, no. The lights would go down, the orchestra would be playing the scene change music, and you'd hear this. They're putting together and taking (laughs) apart stuff? Yeah, putting together and taking apart stuff in blackout. Oh my goodness. It was nuts. Yeah, and at the time we were like, oh, this is so cool. But then we went back on it and we're like, no. Yeah. Why do we have power to <laughs> scene changes? This is ridiculous. But, eh, you know, the things you do when you're in high school, right? Yeah, and I guess, like, maybe we're not far enough removed from it to, right, yeah. to mm-hmm. you know, look back and be like, oh, my God. It's still funny to us. It's oh, yeah. It's still, like, oh, funny. It oh, hasn't passed that, like... Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it's funny for It doesn't sure, pass yeah. that, like, oh, this is so bad. Because, like, like, I still remember it really fondly and just, like, 
the experience, like, I remember almost every night and, like, how every night felt. And just, obviously, like, closing night was, like, super fun. But even, like, the Wednesday, I think, was, like, really, really good. But, yeah, yeah like, maybe in, like, 10, 15, 20 years, I'll look back and, like, rewatch the DVD and be like, oh, my God, like, <laughs> what were <laughs> we doing? Well, no, no, or, or maybe you won't. Maybe you'll be like, mm-hmm. you know what? As far as I'm concerned, that was an incredibly good high school production, right? Yeah, that's true. That's the singing true. was pretty impressive. Like, it, it takes a lot to, as you know, yeah. to have a musical where you have singing and dancing and choreography and, mm. like, everything working, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. and I, I thought it worked out really well. Yeah. And it was yeah. well cast. Yeah. Yeah, the like casting was really good. Jacob as Mr. Mushnick. Yeah, 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 Jacob, he was so And good. that was, like, his first Yeah, there play. were a lot of people that... It was their first either musical or play, mm-hmm. and they just, like, rose to the occasion. You couldn't mm-hmm. even tell. And Alandra. And Alandra. Amazing. I mean, an amazing singer. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. She, was, she was playing uh, Audrey. Audrey, yeah. And, and Shivy as the dentist. Shivy as the dentist. Too perfect. <laughs> um, and uh, I want to call them the Garbage Pail Kids, but that's not who they are. Oh, the, the urchins. Yeah, the urchins. The, the urchins, urchins, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, Hannah Baker. Hannah, Janelle, and... Um, uh, Man, I forgot her name. But oh, she was like the two chorus? Years. Yeah, yeah. The, the Greek chorus? The three, chorus. three, three uh, yeah, yeah. girls. Yeah, she was like two years younger. Great, great singer. I would not have thought of it. Joy. Joy? Wasn't it Joy? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was Joy. Asian? Yeah, yeah. Joy. Yes. Joy, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't... Remember. That was her last year. Here, oh, okay. Because okay. I think she went to Sands or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I could not have thought she was a music theater kid. Yeah. Like, she came to an audition once and got the call back. And, yeah. Cool. People surprise you. They do. They do. Especially in high school. That's why <laughs> something like that is great. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, there's all these surprises. Yeah, exactly. Hidden talents or uncovered talents, right? Mm-hmm. Well, and, and <clears throat> the big production is the opportunity to share that with the rest of the school, right? Mm. Like, in sometimes in the drama department, you know you got talent. Yeah. But the rest of the school doesn't know. Mm-hmm. So we got to show this off. We got to show everybody what, what the drama department is capable of. Exactly. Yeah. For sure. So after you left high school, you went into, what did you get into? Um, I went straight into film school, like, a week after commencement. Uh-huh. And I did... 16 months of film school, like continuous. It was like an intensive program at Vancouver Film School. And basically, it's almost like high school. It's like five days a week. You're there nine to four. And I think you, you, it's two classes, two three hour classes with like an hour break. Was so, it generalized or did you specialize in something right away? Um, well, it was just for acting. So it was for acting. Yeah, it was just okay. only for acting. So all the classes were tailored to like build a career in acting for film and TV. Um, and yeah, it was, it was, it was really cool, really intense. I, there was a point where I just didn't see people for a while <laughs> other than like my classmates. It was like a class of 12 people and no, I, I loved it. Well, and they become like family, right? When, yeah. you're, when you're in a small cohort group like that, mm-hmm. yeah, you build a bond. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Um, the, the sucky thing is that like half, more than half my class was international. So I think Three or four of my class, four of my classmates were Mexican, oh, wow. and they're not in Can- they're not in Canada anymore. Mm-hmm. One of them was Brazilian. He's in Brazil. Two are American, and they went back to the states. And um, I think three or I think yeah, there's only three or four, including myself, that are still in Vancouver. <laughs> well, I mean, that speaks to the reputation that VFS has. Yeah, right. It's exactly. internationally renowned school. Mm-hmm. Was it difficult for you to get into? What was the process? Oh, what was the process? Um. After I decided I wanted to go, I met with one of the advisors, and we just kind of talked. He talked me through the program. Uh, we talked about my experience, and he was like, okay, well, um, if you want to do... So there's two different acting programs. There's the acting for film and TV, that's the one year, mm-hmm. and the uh, essentials program, which is about four months. Yeah, it's about four months, so two terms. And you can go in straight into the one year if you, like, you know, do an audition or you could just go straight into the essentials, then do the one year, which is what I did because I was just like, you know, I have no professional experience and especially in front of like a camera, Mm -hmm. like I've done like theater for a few years, but in front of a camera, you know, audition style, just like 
no experience. And what is what do you need to be experienced in for that's different from theater? Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, well, one of the things I realized when I got in is adjusting the volume because you know they have the mic right here, right? Right. So it's just when you're talking to someone, you, you talk to them conversationally as opposed to making sure people can hear you in the back. Mm-hmm. Which so um, Turpin's obviously a theater person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and like I realize. Um, yeah, like I just got really quiet when I started acting, which is, I mean, fine because you're mic'd unless you you're screaming or shouting or whatever. Um, and then another, another thing is just how your body um, show, shows up on camera as opposed to in theater, because again, you are playing to the room in theater. Mm -hmm. So, you know, larger body, you know, actions so that people can see what you're doing. You know, you're grabbing this, people see it. So, you know, they're not confused. Whereas like the camera is like right here. So, you know, they, they usually say, be more specific with your movements. So, you know, if you're doing something, make sure you're doing it with intention because, um, the camera picks it up. Right, you can see the little movements the, or the subtlety, eye batting or whatever. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And that was like one of the weirdest things because you're like, oh, I'm blinking too much. Like we're watching yourself, you know, the first few classes. Like, oh, am I blinking too much? Why are my eyebrows moving so much? Why, mm-hmm. why am I doing this? Why do I keep, you know? So it's just, yeah. One of the things, uh, the big thing was voice. Another thing was just yeah, the body how you use your body in front of the camera as opposed to theater. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're, an, you're an HD high res. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. You can't hide behind <laughs> you the, can't the hide. thing that's like staring at you. Yeah. Where, whereas in theater, I guess they, they blanket you with makeup sometimes. Right. Exactly. I know opera singers. They're like, if you look at them close up, it's quite scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The only time I ever took a film acting course, it was through, um, no, it was through an agency. It was through Tarlington. Carol Tarlington uh, had a had an academy, mm-hmm. and um, my first day on camera, cut. You're a theater actor, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know, it, like, it, it was all about toning everything down and, mm-hmm. and making it more subtle, mm-hmm. um, and and being so economical. Yeah, everything had to have a purpose. You don't have to work so hard in yes. front of the camera, you know. Yeah. And I remember my camera co my camera instructor for the essentials program was like, "Yeah, I can tell you to theater, you know. Um yeah, we're just going to have to work on, you know, just, you know, getting that energy down." And I'm still trying to like get in, get my energy down. Mm-hmm. And that's just because I'm a light person, but um yeah, it's 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 just the real subtleties in front of the camera that you have to adjust to. Which I knew, you know, mm-hmm. going into it, which is why I was like, yeah, like, I'll audition, like, but I don't think, you know, I should just do the whole thing. Because mm-hmm. another thing, too, is I wanted the as much experience going into the world as I could mm-hmm. in the shortest amount of time, which is why I did an intensive. But, yeah, it worked out. So, so after that, I mean, did you start taking jobs right away? Like, have you always worked? Or? Um, so... The way, uh, when you graduate, they kind of, another reason why I wanted to go to VFS was when you graduate, they kind of leave you with a package that you can like submit to agents. So you, you leave with, uh, headshots with a demo, even a voice demo. And, uh, there's this thing called casting workbook. It's basically Mm -hmm. like, I don't know, like LinkedIn for actors and agents to, Mm -hmm. uh, actors, agents and casting directors to like communicate. I guess, or Facebook. I don't know. It's like a way. So it's like a website. Yeah. It's a website where like you have your profile and like, you know, agents can, you know, stumble across it Mm -hmm. or, um, casting directors, if they're looking for something, agents can use that to submit you. Right. So you leave with like, and it's like a yearly subscription thing. So the school leaves you with like a year of that. And so the, what VFS does is with their graduating class for about two months, they kind of like throw their graduating class to agents and be like, Hey, these are the new actors in the world. You know, if you like any of them, meet them, whatever. So they did that when my class graded and about three or four days after graduation, I got an email from an agent saying, Hey, I really liked your profile. I liked your demo. I'd like to meet with you this week. Um, yeah, let me know. And then, you know, I met with her. I really, really liked her. And one of the things I loved about her was she was just like, Hey, uh, you know, you don't have to sign with me now. I really enjoyed it. You know, take your time, see other people. Cause it's kind of like dating, you know, you, yeah. you, it is. Yeah. You, just you don't kinda, want somebody overly aggressive. Yeah, exactly. And, and you needy. know, yeah. And you kind of have to like see other people before you pick someone. So, uh-huh. uh, I, I did get a couple more emails with the different agencies in town, but you know, I, the first one just stuck with me. So I, 
emailed her back. And I was like, you know what? I really like your vibe. Right. I like, I'd love to work with you. And I've been at the same agency since. And, uh, about a week later, I think I booked my first job with her. It was a non-speaking on uh, a show called Lucifer, which used to film here. I think it's canceled now, but, um, yeah, it was like a non-speaking role. I was like, Oh, this is great. Like just to be on set and gain this experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and then about a month after that, I got another job, but I didn't get to shoot it because the job was for a bartender and I was, you couldn't do it. yeah, I was like 19 and I looked <laughs> 16 or 15. So then like I, I get on set. I don't even know why they hired me, but I arrive on set. I'm like, okay, okay. First speaking role. I got two days on, I like it was on iZombie and I was like, okay, I got two days. Oh my God, this is exciting. Um, and then I arrive on set, we do like a rehearsal and then they're like, okay, like final touches, do whatever. And then like. Uh, the, the, the hair and makeup person comes up and is like, Hey, uh, we're just going to come and see if we can like throw some facial hair on you. And I was like, okay, cool. Whatever. Or maybe, you know, like stubble or whatever. So, you know, they tried doing stuff on me and then the director's like, Hey man, um, sorry, but I don't think like we can use you because we need someone who looks 21 cause it's set in the States. Right. Mm -hmm. And you just look too young. And I was like, you know what? I get it. It's all good. And then, yeah. So what happens in that situation? Mm. Um, that's, I've never been in a situation like that. Yeah. It's, so it's, do yeah, you, yeah. that's their mistake. Do you still get paid? Um, I got paid for the day cause I was booked for two days yeah. and acting is contract work. Yeah. Right. So they signed me on a contract and basically it's daily rates. And since it's an American production, it's daily rate plus a buyout, mm -hmm. which is 105% or something of the, the rate. So for the day I actually arrived and showed up, they paid me the full. And then the next day they just paid me the rate as like, they didn't buy me out. Cause yeah. Cause you weren't shot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, the, I mean, if, since it was their mistake they were like, and even the casting director too was like, oh yeah, we'll like look, we'll keep on the lookout for roles for him in the future mm -hmm. and for the show. And I ended up on it, um, like months later, but yeah, it was, okay. it was a weird situation where I kind of left mm -hmm. and yeah, it was, it was, I was disappointed obviously. Oh, but, for sure. Yeah. yeah. But that's but left cool on story. pretty good terms. Considering. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. It wasn't like I made a mistake or like, you know, they fired me or anything because that would have been well and, and that really speaks to a lot of the industry is that mm -hmm. it's not about how talented you are no it's totally about how you look yeah in relationship <laughs> to everybody else right yeah like if, if uh, this wouldn't happen but mm -hmm. let's just imagine it's a bar scene mm -hmm. with a whole bunch of children at the bar <laughs> you, yeah. you probably could have stayed because yeah. in relationship to the children you would have appeared much older right exactly but a person in a bunch of children. <laughs> well, you, know I mean, though, you know what I mean, right? It's all, it's all relationships, right? Uh -huh. um, so it's it's not just about how you look, even though mm -hmm. how you look does count. It's mm -hmm. how you look next to that person, next totally. to that person. Mm -hmm. And uh, so much of, of the industry is subjective, and people mm -hmm. can get so down on themselves. Oh, mm -hmm. this is not working out, and you go for a long stretch with nothing. But it, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you're a bad actor. Not at all. No. And one of the things I'm really happy that I left... Uh, film school with was knowing that like not booking something doesn't mean I'm bad. It just means I, a lot of it is like wrong place, wrong time. You have That's to your be fit. exactly, yeah. you know, like, like I looked it, as for, for that uh, audition as an example, like maybe what I did was, you know, good enough. They liked what I did, but then like when it got in real life, cause it was a scene with uh, two of the leads too. So they're obviously proper adults. And, um, you know, like a kid serving them just looks weird, right? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> and the other bartender was an older gentleman, right? And so I was like a junior bartender, but it still wouldn't pass. I guess when they're casting, they already kind of have, they visualize what you should be looking like. Yeah, yeah, because it's a, uh, unlike theater, you know, film and TV is a lot more of a visual medium. Mm -hmm. because it matters so much what you look like. Sometimes they'll hire someone who isn't as good for the part just because they look the part. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sometimes it's just not about talent at all. And sometimes, you know, they'll find someone who is super talented and isn't right for the role, and they'll fit them in somewhere. It, it can go either way. Mm -hmm. So it, it it sometimes doesn't serve yourself just being down on, like, certain experiences like that or, like, not booking a role or not working for a while because those things do happen. Well, and at least in... Uh 
the theater world in Vancouver, I should say, mm-hmm. not in New York, but you do go through a casting director first, mm-hmm. right? It, typically in theater, even in professional theater in Vancouver, when you go into an audition, you're auditioning for the director of the play. Yeah, yeah. Right? Whereas in film and television, or if you're on Broadway, you'll go through a casting director, and then you get to the director, and the director gets the final say. Yo, oh, right? yeah. So the casting director casts you and says, yeah, I think you're right for the part, and then the director get you later and be like, mm, no. Or it could even, um, one thing, I'm, I, I just really want to sit down with like a casting director and mm-hmm. a director and just ask how casting works, because... You can even have the director like you, because mm-hmm. I recently auditioned for something, and um, I went through the first audition with the casting director, and she liked me, and I met with the director and like one of the producers, and they really liked me, and then I did a chemistry read with the, uh, the other actors, and then it went, I think it went up to um, the production company, whereas like the, or the network, um, so if it's Fox or ABC or whatever, mm-hmm. everyone can like you up until them, and then they could be like, no. Like they have the final say because they have the money, right? And then at the end of the day, they're trying to make money. They don't care. They care about the show, but like they're trying to make money. So the director can love you, and like you know, the producers for the show can love you. But then it's like the network producers can be like, "No, we want this person because." I guess that's why a lot of creative people like um, streaming services like Netflix a mm. lot because apparently they they give a lot of creative freedom to the yeah, creators. Right? Yeah, and yeah, I mean. I think that's a lot of the reason why a lot of Netflix shows are blowing up and are uh-huh. really good because a lot of the creators get to do what they want to do. Uh-huh. Like I look at a lot of shows and I'm like, wow, the casting this is amazing. Like you don't see casting like this on like mm-hmm. Fox or I think even HBO is kind of like that mm-hmm. where it's just like they get a lot of freedom because yeah. Because I mean, the network execs are thinking about money. Exactly. exactly. And they have so much power with this like thought about making money. And then, you know, a show can have like two seasons and just get canceled because they were just thinking about money, not the longevity. Mm -hmm. Whereas like a lot of these like Game of Thrones and I can't think of a Netflix show right now. But yeah, a lot of these shows that give a lot of creative freedom think about the long term because it's it's their project. It's their baby. Right. Mm -hmm. And they want to see it um, like flourish as opposed to like just making as much money as it while this thing is hot and then like ditching it well and then the flip side of that coin is that typically a lot of those hbo shows or netflix shows they're pitched with a shelf life Mm -hmm. boardwalk empire right Mm -hmm. we're gonna go for five seasons and then we're gonna end it and um cbs right now has the big bang theory which is in its 12th season (laughs) and it kind of stopped being funny after eight Oh yeah, it's it's so stale. The, yeah, the show can get really stale. Yeah, and just you know. But that's that's CBS thinking it's still making money. Exactly. So we'll keep rolling it. But well, and spinoffs like Young Sheldon too, just like, and just keeping the show right. going. Yeah, and I heard just about that. milking yeah. it for all it's worth. Oh yeah. <laughs> despite the fact that what you're creating is garbage. Mm-hmm. Your mm-hmm. diehard fans are going to watch it no matter what. Your mm-hmm. non-diehard fans are going to be curious and will tune in. Yeah, you right. Know, and yeah. I'll watch it on the plane just because sure. <laughs> yeah. I'll be falling asleep in and out. But I'm yeah. not going to like sit down and be like, "This is something I need to catch" because I want to know what the characters are doing every week. You know, yeah. Young Sheldon. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> One of my friends saw the first episode and he was like, "This is this is so bad. Yeah. This is so bad." Well, and what we're seeing right now in in television is all of these reboots mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like what's and, up with that and they're shooting a chucky uh reboot right now actually, oh, you're kidding by me. the same people that made it oh okay uh, yeah oh, that'd be interesting so, yeah so i mean that could go either way because it was kind of i re- i enjoyed it i enjoyed yeah. the old one too but um then you could just see the you know chucky just being a much more of a money grab right because yeah you know they saw it was so good now it just becomes more about that as opposed to bringing back an old movie so it was like murphy brown Aren't they doing new episodes of Murphy Brown? What? Yeah. Really? That was like a sitcom when yeah. I was a kid. Uh-huh. Um, I didn't Roseanne. They brought back Roseanne, yeah. right? For like two or um, three seasons. Yeah. And, I mean, now she's not on it. Now it's called, um, what's the uh, last name of the, the family? the last name of the family. The Connors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they're, they're talking to Kelsey Grammer. They want to bring Frasier back. I heard about really? that. Yeah. It's going to be a podcast. <laughs> Is it? Well, <laughs> Yeah, instead of a radio show. Oh, yeah, yeah. But oh. he said that he doesn't want to do it because mm-hmm, yeah. he thinks... No, like we, yeah. we we stopped that show because it had run its course. Yeah, how are you going to start creating new content 
for characters that we're done with. Well, you know? creative integrity, right? Yeah. That's, that's a, you have to say no at a point. It's like, the show ended well. I don't want to beat it to death. Yeah. I don't, like, mm-hmm. old fans will come and be like, oh my God, like, my show's back. But, you know, will they really be like, oh, I'm watching it with the same enthusiasm as I was when it first was on, or I'm just watching it because I'm a huge Fraser fan? Well, there's, yeah. a, there's a ton of money in nostalgia. Yeah. That's for sure. But, like, Kelsey yeah. Grammer. And David Hyde Pierce, you could argue that they were at the peak of their careers when mm. that happened, right? Mm-hmm. Are they, I mean, you don't want to imagine that any actor is ever not good anymore, mm-hmm. but can they play those characters now at mm-hmm. their age this many years later and have that same consistency and that same bond? That I'm they, sure they could. Yeah. It's just not really creative anymore. Well, and there's that like too, Recycling right? the old stuff. It's, oh, yeah, it's right? selling out in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't like reboots or... No. Or rehashes or, or anything. Will and Grace is back on the air, too. Yeah, I was no, just thinking about that right now. Yeah. As you, I mean, it's getting good reviews, I think, but I yeah. mean... X-Files came back. X-Files yeah. came back? They're talking about doing a Friends reunion, but I think that's not going to be a, uh, like Return the Series. I think it's going to be like a three-episode cycle or something. But That's cute. Sure. That's cute. <laughs> I mean, well, my favorite of all reboots um, in that way was... Um, when Larry David on Curb Your Enthusiasm oh, right. did a four episode Seinfeld. cycle where they did a Seinfeld reunion, but it was mm-hmm. kind of like the show within the show. Yeah, and yeah. It was, it was a really clever way of doing it, of getting yeah. those actors back together and doing Seinfeld, but at the same time not doing Seinfeld. You yeah, know, like it, was, it was just clever. Yeah, so that I don't mind. Mm-hmm. But, you know, oh, you know, we're bringing back. Uh, exact same thing, same people, just in 2018. Yeah, I exactly. Guess. <laughs> so, what, what projects have you worked on that, that we would know about? Um, this year I did a, a day on Supernatural on their, I think, 12th to 13th season finale. I don't was know. Was that a speaking on. role? It was, yeah. I played oh, wow. like uh, a guy working at a convenience store and, um, I don't really watch the show, but <laughs> <laughs> one of the, I mean, it's got 13 seasons. Like you I, were working at a convenience store. Yeah. I was working at a convenience <laughs> store uh-huh. and like, or a gas station thing. And like one of the guys, um, I guess has like powers and like he, gets me in, like, this chokehold and, like, force pushes me to, like, the <laughs> oh, fridge. Cool. And, like, I had a stunt oh, double wow. and everything. It was really wow. fun. And, like, you know, I was, like, kind of, like, choked. And, you know, it was cool. It was really cool. Um, and, you know, the guys in Supernatural are just really, like, the two guys are super nice. Uh, the whole crew is, like, a family. Cause and they're, they're also Supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They're supernatural. Yeah. I just actually saw um, a thing about the pilot, and I was looking at them like 13 years ago, and they looked so baby faced. Yeah. Now they look like these rugged men, and they're, they're you know they didn't sound the way they do now. Like now they sound like Jack. You know we gotta we gotta go and like you know kill these demons. Whereas before they <laughs> talk like regular people. <laughs> yeah, we gotta go kill these demons. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, no, like being being on sets like that is really fun. Where they've been doing it for a few seasons, they just kind of have the, have a rhythm. And also they, they joke around. Like I remember we were doing this one take and like, um, one of them made like fart noises or I, I don't know. I don't know if they were fart noises or they actually farted. I, I still don't know to this day, but it was in the middle of the take and they have time to like joke around like that because they're so efficient and they're, yeah. they're, they've been doing it so long. Right. And that was really fun to watch. Uh, like pros do. And I had the same experience on iZombie when I came back on the show. Um, you know, it was really chill, but at the same time, like, they got the job done. And uh, you'll find that a lot of these, like, lead the leads for these shows are super nice. They're super, super nice. And, like, they're very approachable. And they're... Professional. They're super, yeah, super <laughs> professional. And, like, have fun, too, right? Like, <laughs> you can... They're not the typical, like, oh, don't talk to them, you know. You're only on the show for, like, an episode. So, you know, they they need their space type thing. It's just, Although I'm sure there are those. There are, no, totally. I think it's that's... It's just a personality mm-hmm. thing. Exactly. And, I mean, I haven't come across any like that, uh, which is fortunate. Yeah. Because, I mean, the first thing I want to do on set is, like, learn as much as I can. And, like, it's hard to learn when, you know, you can't communicate with the people that are doing it for, you know, de- uh, decades. And, you mm-hmm. know, I've been lead actors for so long, so... I wonder if that's kind of the nature of the business in Vancouver, right? Because a mm. lot of the actors aren't from here, mm-hmm. the leads, mm-hmm. right? And if you're cool enough in your personal and professional life to be like, yeah, I'll travel for the job. Yeah. It's probably in your personality to be super like outgoing and, and welcoming and open to everything. I don't know David Duchovny. Okay. I don't, but <laughs> one of the things that he 
desperately wanted was for X-Files to not be filmed in Vancouver anymore. Oh. And the last couple of seasons were filmed in L.A. because he mm-hmm. had the star power to be like, no, not going to Vancouver anymore. Yeah. And, and if you have that kind of attitude and that kind of star power mm-hmm. that – you can move the entire production to yeah. your convenience. <laughs> that sounds more like the type of person you'd be like, don't talk to me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm not going, you come to me. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah. And well, the thing is like a lot of these, uh, LA, you know, American lead actors have families back home too. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, for sure. So that makes and, sense. Yeah. So, I mean, I can see why they'd want to move it back home, but mm-hmm. at the same time, like the ones that stay here and shoot for about nine months continuously in the rain. Um, <laughs> well, that was apparently David Duchovny's big thing mm. like, when he wanted to move back spouse. He, he had just had it with, Right. Pacific Northwest rain. I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what happened with Lucifer too. I mean, the show is set in LA, which I don't know why they, I guess cause it's cheaper to shoot in Vancouver. Yeah. So that's why they came here in the first couple seasons. But, um, yeah, they moved to LA after they moved back to LA cause it's set in LA and it's mm-hmm. really hard to schedule shoots when it rains here for about nine months. So, and it's supposed to look like LA too. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it, it's very interesting that LA is the center of the film world. Like all the mm-hmm. major studios have their back lots there and, mm-hmm. and their big sound stages. But from what I've heard, the city of LA is not very accommodating when it mm-hmm. comes to on location filming. Huh, I didn't know that. Like, I've, I've been through downtown Vancouver where streets are closed and it's, it's really inconvenient for the city. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I am, I have all the patience in the world for mm-hmm. it because I, I believe I'm part of the industry, you know? For I'm sure, yeah. High school drama teacher, but you know, it's still like, it's art, make art. Mm-hmm. And I will detour and show up late and I'm okay with that. Go exactly. make your art. And people get it, right? People, like, well, like, oh, but, but some people, yeah, some people in Vancouver, I know they get a little frustrated. Like, oh, yeah. I'm moving today. Especially like a, um, what was the superhero film? Flash? No. Oh, uh, D- Green Deadpool? Arrow? Deadpool. Yeah. Where they're on the viaducts oh, yeah. and they closed the mm. viaducts for like a yeah. week, right? <laughs> People were pissed. But the city of Vancouver is like, yeah, do it. Get her done, mm-hmm. right? In LA, not accommodating. It's mm-hmm. like, we're not going to close streets for you. We're not going to give you Shut permits. down a freeway in LA? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> That'd be ridiculous. Yeah. Well, well some, some do it. Mm-hmm. Um, La La Land, right? La La like, Land. Then La La Land. But they, they didn't the shut scene, down the freeway. Yeah. They shut down a ramp. Yeah, right. right. Um, but even that, they it was very strict. They were only allowed to shut down half of it. So they had, like, literally what you see. And then behind them, there's still cars going by, <laughs> right. right? So, uh, yeah, from what I've heard, LA is not a very accommodating city. And I, Yeah, I, I guess it makes sense, too, just because... LA's been like the film TV central of like the world. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, I guess in Vancouver too, at least for the city, this is like, this used to be like an untapped market where they're like, Oh wow, really? You're paying us. Yeah. Come like, come, you Mm -hmm. know, do your thing. And there's so many productions now, you know, that like the city's making, I think they, in the last year they made somewhere up, it's like something billion like something billion or like at least like hundreds of millions of dollars just from film and TV. Uh, and, and I guess for like a lot of Vancouverites too, it's still this like novelty thing. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Like what? Like supernatural shooting here? Deadpool shooting here? Oh my God. Like, you know, this, the celebrities in town, like, you know, so I think it's still cause it's really fresh to us, but maybe in like 10, 15 years we'll be done with it when they all start moving here. Yeah, yeah. It was interesting. Uh, Mr. Kong and I were talking, if not earlier this week than late last week about um, whenever we see Vancouver in a film or mm-hmm. on TV, mm-hmm. how, because we're from here, it takes us out of the moment just yeah. for that split second. Cause yeah. like, we're like, that's not so-and-so that's Butte street. Like, I know. I, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know we're in Vancouver here, <laughs> friends. Like let's, let's get serious here. Mm-hmm. I was, I was watching something recently and it was shot here and uh, I had to pause it cause I, I recognized the downtown street. I was like, does that say East Pender on the on the right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, what? Okay, this is this. That's not Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I hate that. My my wife watches Riverdale. You been oh, on Riverdale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never been no. on Riverdale. No, not yet. Um, so one day uh, last year when she was on that leave, I come home and she's mm. like, "You gotta watch this. You gotta watch this." And I'm not. I I. I'm sure it's a great show. I haven't started it. Yeah. So I wasn't, I'm like, I don't want to watch an episode. Like, I don't know it from the beginning. Like, mm-hmm. what are you doing? She's like, no, 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 just a clip, just a clip. So she fast forwards to this moment 
and they were filming in the church where her and I got married. No way. Yeah, so we're like, that's St. Francis of Assisi. Like, that's, oh my that's God. Our, that the parish where we got married. It was really cool. Like, uh-huh. hey, I know that church. Um, mm. And yeah, it's cool when you can see stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, you know, memories of your own life yeah. in like yeah, film yeah. and TV shows that are, you know, as big as Riverdale. <laughs> but what's really funny is I remember thinking, gosh, I wish we had that lighting when we got there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a very old church and, mm-hmm. and it's it's got its normal lighting and then the stained glass windows and it, sure. it can be really beautiful on a sunny day yeah. but the lighting that they had brought in there it looked like yeah. a disco I was like oh cool yeah. why didn't we have <laughs> yeah. that <laughs> well yeah when you're under those lights too like you end up sweating after a couple oh, takes like yeah. they just like light you up you yeah, yeah yeah Has have they gotten a lot to LED though have you noticed or Oof, I do not know yeah no so I know in, um, in, in live theater now there's a big push to get away hmm. from these old incandescent filament bulbs and switch to that would make sense because it's so hot well it's it, yeah. there's heat there's energy efficiency yeah. so mm-hmm. it costs less and um with the old incandescent bulbs like you literally got to climb up the ladder change the mm. gel filter if you want to change the color but oh, now with yeah. led you can change color on the board and right plus they last forever they last forever yeah. so it's the only thing is it costs a lot of money from the outset. Like if, sure, if I wanted yeah. to take Delview and say, scrap it all, start over, it would be a huge oh, yeah. cost to refit everything with LED. Mm-hmm. In the long run, it would save so much money, yeah. but it would be a huge cost to just implement. But uh, have you noticed that in film? Or? Actually, I think for now, they're, we're, they're still using the old school, you know, because yeah. you have to put the gloves on to kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah. carry them because, you know, so the, hot. Yeah, yeah, they're so hot and you got to change the gels. And But there might be some productions where maybe they have a mix of both sure, just yeah. because, like, if you need to do the light changes or whatever i mean they're getting better with making it look like the coloration Mm -hmm. of the leds was a big issue when they first came out right because like if you put it in your home it would look really cold yeah like a costco but but now (laughs) like i've changed all the leds i mean all the lights in my house and Mm -hmm. it looks great it looks like just like the halogens that that we we took out so Mm -hmm. they've gone a lot better in in whatever technology they're putting in there oh for sure yeah i'm just looking at your imdb page (laughs) Nice. Which is, I mean, it's impressive <laughs> that you have one. And yeah. it's like, there's quite a few things. I zombie. And you've been on the Bletchley Circle San Francisco like five times. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Five um, different episodes as Dennis Bearden. Yeah. That who's, one... who's Dennis Bearden? Well, he is a young um, activist in the 1950s who, um, yeah, no, the show, <laughs> the show is it's the, in the 1950s. Yeah. It's in the 1950s. Oh, okay. Uh, it's really cool. Um, like my costume looks like super different, like, you know, stuff I wouldn't wear obviously, uh-huh. but I was just like to the costume, you're like, this looks sick. Like it, it all looked so dope. Um, but Are you like a code breaker. No, I'm not. My mom is, Your my mom's, mom's a code one of the main code breakers. And, um, my role in it, you know, as her son and, uh, my dad goes, has gone off to the war. I think it was like whatever war was happening in the 1950s. Korean? Korean war. Yeah. Yeah. One of, yeah, I think it was that one. And then, you know, or off to some base or something. And, um, so she's a, not a single mom, but like, she's, you know, my dad's off to, he's in the first four episodes, but then like, you know, he gets shipped off somewhere and, uh, I have a little sister in it. Um, and Throughout the show, it uh, it shows you know <clears throat> uh, my activism and like how I care because it's set in this city, this like neighborhood in the San, in San Francisco, um, where it was it used to be a big Jewish community, mm-hmm. and they were pushed out um, because of the events of the wars and whatnot, and so a lot of um, black people moved in those communities, and then now they were starting to get pushed out at that time to build highways, like houses were being torn down to, you know. So is this a big, like, civil rights kind of African-American um, push? Yeah, well, that that was what was going on in the neighborhood, and, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I felt, you know, I was trying to change it, you know, you know, picketing outside the mayor's office, yeah, yeah. Uh, those kind of things. There's scenes of that, and... Um, and my mom was for the cause, but she, she had fought so long and she was just like, her thing was like, yeah, you know, like I, you know, I just want to keep my family safe and whatever. And then, you know, we butt heads a couple of times because I'm like, why aren't you fighting anymore? You used to be such a fighter. And then I, you know, I, there's a scene where I have an argument with my dad because he wants us to move away. And I'm like, no, that's what everyone's doing. If we don't, if everyone moves, then like <laughs> our community is nothing, you know? And mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's really cool. I really love my Way to go. Yeah. Yeah. And then eventually so, get a white girlfriend. <laughs> I see is, your mom right here. Um, yeah. 
Two yeah, yeah. female British code breakers team with American cryptographers to solve a series of murders in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What, what network carries this one? Um, the sh- well, the original show was called Bletchley Circle, mm-hmm. which went on for about two seasons, I believe, in, in the UK. In the UK, so it was on ITV and mm-hmm. uh, probably another network there. But it was picked up here by uh, um, uh, BritBox, which is basically uh, like Netflix mm-hmm. for British television. Mm-hmm. And so they ordered a season of it, uh, eight episodes. And uh, so they did the original streaming in the States. And then when it came to... Oh, and it also wasn't on ITV in the UK. Mm-hmm. And then it came to Canada on City TV because they picked up the season. And I think that finished airing about last week or the week before that. Mm. So it was on, it was on for about uh, eight weeks uh, in Canada as well. I wonder if I can get it on demand. They do have it on demand. I think I want to watch it. Yeah. It's, I want to watch it. That sounds, sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, intriguing. It's a fun show. It's yeah, yeah. a really, really fun show. It, so is it done now? Um, it, well, we're done season one. Uh, yeah. I haven't heard word about whether there will be a season two or not. Mm. Um, and you know, hopefully they bring me back as well because that'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So far, it's just the first season. Because and- you've had some pretty steady work so far, right? Yeah, I mean, this kept me busy for yeah. a couple months um, because I think each two episodes shot for about six weeks or something. And so, you know, within the six weeks, I'd be working for like a day or two, and then you know, on and off here and there. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, can you can you uh, enlighten us about the like the process? Once you got hired for something like Bletchley Circle, mm-hmm. um, what did you do after that? I guess you got a copy of the script because I, I yeah. don't really know what goes on. Yeah. So um, I got an email basically saying, "Hey, so when when you book something, one of the first people to get in touch with you, other than your agent, is the costume designer because they're like the costume designer. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, hey, congrats. Um, so can you send us your measurements? <laughs> and uh, and then you know after you send that to them, it's like, great. Uh, you you able to meet next week to you know try some stuff on? We have some things, and you know, so that happens. You so you kind of get a a look to see you know what you'll be wearing throughout the show, and then you know if Depending on the costumer or the show or your role, you can kind of have input onto as to like what you like or what feels comfortable. And um, so then after all that's done, um, I think somewhere in between, I got a call from like the executive producer, and he was like, "Hey, congratulations!" You know, uh, he was at the audition, you know, and so he was like, "Yeah, you know, you had a great audition. We loved it, and you know, I'm excited to work with you. If you have any questions, let us know." And um, well, for this show, um, uh, the woman who plays my mom. Uh, super, super wonderful lady. Um, she decided to, you know, try getting some of the cast together for a little, you know. That's cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Before the show even started shooting, just to kind of, you know, meet each other, have some wine, whatever. Um, and then, uh, you know, you get the sc- While all that's happening, you, you know, sit on the script for a while. Uh, depending on the show, um, this one, I think, it, it shot in blocks of two episodes. So they gave us the first two episodes, those scripts and, um, through film and TV, there, there there's so many revisions. Like they'll be revising probably up until like the day you shoot. So there'll be like a blue script, a green script, a red script. uh, And then I think the, the final, the final script is called like goldenrod or something. And like, you know, and yeah, they, they have so many revisions. So like, um, you can get the original script like two weeks before and like, okay, okay, learn your lines. And then like, you get another script like two days later and then do they give you the full script or just your, uh, part? the full episode. Oh wow. yeah. Okay. So it's really cool. You got to get to see the thread of the whole episode and mm-hmm. yeah. See where you tie in to the whole show. Good question mm-hmm. though. All those revisions and stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you get to keep those or do you have to give them back? Oh, you keep them. I mean, if, if they send you an email, right, yeah, like yeah. a PDF of the script, like, you know, that's yours. Because what would be neat to do would be to sit down with all versions of one episode <laughs> and see how the writers changed uh-huh. it over their revision process. I mean, just as a, <laughs> as a literary analysis, that would be really cool to see. It's like, oh, well, this character did this, and then they <laughs> cut that scene, and now it's this. and yeah, that'd be Oh, neat. yeah. I mean, even from the audition to the first script I got um, – I remember, I don't remember exactly what it was, but there was, a, you know, I, obviously I, I still remember the audition and what I did in the room. And then I got the script and I'm like, oh, this is different <laughs> than like what I did in the audition. Like maybe like a line is different, like a word is different. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. Do you have to sign like a non-disclosure or 
I mean, it's, for, it's not Star Wars. No, yeah. Well, I mean, for but, some you do, right? I mean, yeah. for some, even when you get the audition, you have to sign an NDA because um, they might either give you the script or, like, you have a slight idea about what's going on in the in the movie or the, the show. So they're like, yeah, we don't want anyone knowing what's happening, mm-hmm. even for that one scene or those two scenes, right? Have you ever mm-hmm. gone into an audition not knowing what you were auditioning for? Um... Maybe, probably, probably. A, a buddy of mine, an actor friend, mm-hmm. went in for an audition, and mm-hmm. then he was told it's a superhero movie. Mm. In the scene that you're going to read, you are the not in superhero. You're your person, your secret identity, or whatever. Right. So he did the scene. Didn't get the didn't get the call. Right. Two years later, he and I go see uh, the Andrew Garfield Spider Man. Oh, oh no way! And, and he's like. I auditioned for this. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I know these lines. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, I see why I didn't get it now. They gave it to Andrew Garfield. Oh, yeah. He's like, okay, well, fair enough, right? Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. It, it was funny that his agent sent him, mm-hmm. and he didn't know – like, he was told superhero movie, mm-hmm. and but – and and – you didn't need to know Peter Parker yeah. in order to do the scene. Like, we just want to see you read the scene. And he's like, holy smokes, that's, I had no idea I was auditioning for Spider-Man. Yeah, you know, it totally happens. And, um, well, Vancouver is also, like, a small enough city where, like, word gets around. Yeah. Like, you know, they have code names for things. Yeah. So it's like, oh, they're shooting this thing called this random word they use. Like, you know, it could be bacon fat, but it's actually, like, the next. Yeah, you see those signs around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. And, you know, unless you either really know, like, what the different, like, acronyms mean, mm-hmm. you don't know what's shooting unless you ask like someone who's on location and they might give you like the code name Mm -hmm. um but usually agents in the city are pretty good at that they'll like say hey you have an audition um it's it's you know rumored to be this like i remember when um um trouble at bad times at el royale was filming here whatever Mm -hmm. it was called um and uh hemsworth was here thor yeah and uh yeah and uh, is that uh, liam chris 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 Chris. hemsworth was in town Yeah. yeah and um they, I got an audition for that, and like um, my my agent was just like, yeah, I think this is the title, but like this is what they're working with, this is the working title. Yeah. So yeah, like things like you get that in Vancouver a lot, but I've been in LA. There's so many like, oh, you know, we don't know what this is. This is this, these are the sides, you know. And I have had auditions where for the audition I have to sign an NDA too. So yeah. you know, it, it's some things they really do keep hush hush. Yeah. So okay. you, get, you get the script. You get the script. Now you learn the script. Yeah. And so, then I guess you have a read through. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thing? For that one, especially since um, episode one of a brand new show, um, we had a read through in you know room like this, uh, long table, bunch of chairs, bunch of people. I, well, some people I knew, but some people I didn't know. Right. And so you know you just kind of like, hey, what's up? Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, oh, you're oh, okay. You're this person. Everyone oh, gets oh, a you, name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. There's like a little name thing, yeah. and you know you got a script right in front of you, so. You know, you just chat for a bit and everyone introduces themselves. Hi, I'm Agape. I'm playing Dennis. And, uh, you know, then you read the the episodes or whatever you have in front of you. And then, yeah, director says some stuff, you know, um, uh, pulls you aside if you need to. Like, yeah, okay, I liked what you did in the read. You know, when we get on, on set, you know, do this, this, that. Um, and yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to see a bit more of this or, you know, you just have a discussion, a creative discussion, which is really cool to have before you actually start shooting. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, you know, you just, you have your audition and then, you know, you could be shooting a week later and you just arrive on set and you're like, okay, I made these choices. I hope they work. I hope they like them or whatever. Right. And then you kind of work through it while you're shooting. Whereas in this case, you kind of have that discussion. You get to sit on it for a few days or however long. So, yeah, anyways, you get the read-through, and then I, I think the next thing was just, yeah, showing up on set and doing the thing. You get a trailer? Yeah, yeah. For most, if not all, film TV, no matter how big or small your role, you do get a trailer. Nice. Yeah. Commercial, you don't. I, I've never booked a commercial, but I was on something that was kind of a commercial, and I was like, oh, no trailer. <laughs> like, it was not in like a, oh, like, oh, I didn't get a trailer way, but I was like, oh, this is so weird. Like, this is so interesting. Yeah, He's cool. been a little bit spoiled. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool, cool. This is nice. But yeah, you, for most film and TV, you do get a trailer and depend depending on the role and like the, uh, how much money the show has. You know, I guess the purpose of the trailer is for you to have your, like, I guess there's some lag time where you're waiting for setup or, oh, yeah. or whatever, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. So, like, how much lag time are, are we talking about? 
Um, it depends on the production. It depends on how far um, circus mm-hmm. is from set. So when you arrive on set, like you, you get to circus, which is basically where they have all the trailers. Sometimes where you can, you know, if you drove, you you have your parking there. Sometimes it'll be where cra- uh, the food services Crab is. Services, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you know that there's sometimes there's sort of an area for that, and then like you know you get kind of shuttled to set. And so it depends how far those two are away from each other. I've had it where it's like a like a twelve minute drive from circus to set, so you only see your your trailer um, when you arrive, lunch, and when you leave. And I've had it where it's literally a walk away. So when they're setting up for a new thing, I can be like, "Hey, I'm just gonna go to my trailer," you know, because you have to let them know where you are. I'm like, yeah, hey, I'm just gonna be in my trailer. Let me know if you need me. They'd be like, "All right, cool." And then you know they just communicate that. So um, it depends um, based on where it is, but. Usually you arrive about at least like an hour, hour and a half before you actually need to be on set because uh, if you arrive early in the morning, usually they have breakfast. So you arrive in your clothes, you can show up in sweats or whatever because they have costume. Mm. Um, so you arrive, you know, you get breakfast and then you get hair and makeup and then you get in your costume and then you just wait till they're ready for you. So in your trailer, I guess you're reading, or do they have like video games, <laughs> television? Yeah, I mean it, that depends on the size of the trailer too. I've had uh, honey wagon trailers where it's just like that um, sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're not terrible, yeah. um, uh, but you know it's just like this little bench thing with like a cushion on it, and you know it's 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 pretty small. And um, some of them will have like little TVs there, and for the most part, they do have a bathroom with like. Um, a toilet and like a sink and a mirror um, and like a little closet where for your costume or whatever and then I've had it where um, I get like a decently sized trailer which I was like oh this is this is pretty nice where like they have like a flat screen TV and like a fridge and a microwave and um, a sh- like one yeah one time I had like a shower in there wow <laughs> yeah like a like I could have lived in there like it was bigger than one of my apartments you know I was just <laughs> yeah. like I was like oh wow this is really nice kind of don't want to (laughs) leave but um yeah i mean you just make yourself comfortable if you're going to be there for a number of days usually they try getting you a better trailer because Mm -hmm. you're gonna have to be comfortable there yeah yeah. so if you know you're gonna be there for a while you could either bring i usually sometimes you like stay overnight there no 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 no, you don't no no um but yeah sometimes i just bring like my laptop or uh, I make sure I bring all my chargers because yeah. even when you're not in your trailer and like, you know, they cut and they're just switching, you're just sitting, you know, in the green room, you have your phone with you, right? Mm-hmm. If you want to be on your phone. So yeah, bring your, all your chargers, earphones if you need them. Um, and yeah, whatever, whatever you feel like books are good. Um, I've never brought my PlayStation in a trailer yet. 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 Yeah. But now they got these little classic consoles you could throw that in your bag right yeah like a switch you know like nintendo switch you can just switch do that. yeah yeah so yeah depending on the production value of the show or movie and like how big your role is the trailer. but they've never provided video games for you so no here's no. your trailer i've never made a special request right yeah <laughs> a writer in my contract <laughs> i need to have an xbox in my trailer yeah and they I mean some people can have that in their contracts but you kind of have to have that pull yeah <laughs> i only like blue a water M&Ms. bottle with lime <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah exactly so. factory sealed dasani bottles with lime <laughs> <laughs> oh dasani no no way <laughs> Fiji water oh yeah only, yeah. only yeah oh, oh, oh. <laughs> going for the artisan uh, yeah. Yeah. water's water yeah exactly. <laughs> you'd be surprised <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like my agents sometimes ask me like, oh, do you, you know, when we're, you know, negotiating contracts, like, do you have any requests? I'm like, no, I'm just, I just, I'm, I'm glad I'm on. Just, I just want to work. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Like, like, uh, are they going to pay me? Yeah. Yeah. They're going to pay you. Yeah. No, great. Yeah. We're, we're whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, like, oh, you know, unfortunately they only get a honey wagon and I'm like, no, that's great. Like, that's awesome. Like, you know, like I'm excited. Honey wagon is, is a historical term for outhouse. Oh really? Yeah, like in, <laughs> in particular, we, we were talking about it in our uh, in our innovation ten yes, class. We mm. That in in the old mine shafts, the honey wagon was like this rail car porta potty that it'd be an entry level miner's job yeah. to wheel the honey wagon around and make sure that everybody had their morning poop. Oh my! So God. so when you hear when I hear honey wagon, <laughs> I'm imagining like an outhouse. Uh, it's obviously got a toilet in it. Oh so. yeah, exactly. It does have a toilet. I think. 
for those size trailers, that might be the main purpose. So you just have somewhere to go. Uh-huh. So yeah. maybe that's a fitting name. Yeah, for fitting it. name. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's what I think when I hear honey wagon. I'm like, ooh, that doesn't sound good. That doesn't. So how long are shoots? Oh, like per day? Yeah. Or, oh lord. Um, yeah. Because we're talking like a full day. It's a, right? it's a work day. Yeah. So like yeah, eight hour. Day. Ooh, minimum. Like you're lucky if you're there for eight hours. Oh. Um, just because uh, you have. I mean. Oh, it's usually longer. It's usually way longer. Mm-hmm. Um, so usually I, I find for myself the actor's job being the easiest. It is very difficult, but when you look at the other jobs, there are so many people that arrive there way before you mm-hmm. and leave way after you. Mm-hmm. And then have the to crew. show up. Yeah, the crew. Mm-hmm. Um, director. The director, yeah. the PAs. They work so hard and like location managers and whatever, right? Um, so usually uh, on the day you work, you get a call sheet. With mm-hmm. um, everyone's times, you know, uh, hair and makeup times, they really like get it down like to a T. And it's the first assistant director's job to make sure the director's on schedule, mm-hmm. and uh, you know everyone has these little jobs. Um, so you know, say if my call time's like eight a.m., um, there probably been people have been there for two hours before me, and um, so you know you arrive there at eight a.m. Do your thing, and if I'm there for a full day, I might arrive on set like actually to start acting at maybe like ten a.m. Maybe like if if everything's going smoothly nine, um, and then lunch will probably be around like two p.m. And then there's Wait, like lunch. Yeah, you know, give yeah. eight. Oh no, yeah, from eight, I guess it would be around like one o'clock, mm-hmm. and then you have like a hot lunch, which is, I guess, like a second meal because yeah, there are people that have been there for so long, yeah. right? and you don't have time to go grab a bite. You never leave um, unless you're wrapped. So, if for a full full day, it can be about twelve hours. Um, for a longer day, it can be fourteen. But there'll be crew that are working like sixteen hours, mm-hmm. like a day. Now, wow. Mr. Kong said you you don't spend the night there. Obviously, you no, don't. No, but yeah. have you ever had an overnight shoot? Um, when I did background, I did overnight shoots. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it was this show I forgot what it was called. It was when I was still in high school, mm-hmm. and they were shooting from like I think like five to like five p.m. to like three a.m. Mm-hmm. And so, like, 3 a.m., like, that's when people were wrapped. So there's very few occasions where they probably, like, provide accommodation, and that's usually just for, like, the actors. Yeah. Um, what I, for the thing I did most recently, um, Falling for You, uh, we are shooting in Squamish. That's the Hallmark one? That's the Hallmark one, yeah. Um, we were shooting in Squamish for a few weeks, or maybe, like, a month. No, no, a few weeks. Um, and so... I was just kind of like, uh, how am I getting back to Vancouver? <laughs> Cause there was this one period where we were shooting three days in a row. So, um, it was like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh well, no, it was like, yeah, Wednesday or Thursday or whatever. Right. So after I was done my shoot day, they actually put me up in a hotel, um, up in Squamish just because nice. it's like Squamish you know, hotel. Yeah. I forgot what it was called, like, <laughs> the executive or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, you know, be, just because it's like, they get it, you know, like yeah. you're, Coming in from Vancouver, going all the way up to Squamish. That's and, nice. Yeah, 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 it is nice. But but I, like I know that some films do shoot overnight. Like if you're yeah. if you're doing a night shot, yeah, you could your call time could be like seven p.m. Yeah, and you'll shoot from midnight until the sun rises. Like okay, well now we're done. Oh yeah, you see a lot. You see that a lot with like Flash and Arrow. These yeah, like dark whatever. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. And they just shoot through the night, and after you're done, you go home. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really it's really nice. You got anything coming up? I do not. No, no. The rest of the year is just smooth sailings. Um, had a couple auditions, uh, a couple, like in the last couple of weeks, but usually December is when everything kind of slows down. Yeah. And, you know, I, cause, you know, people take a break. The industry literally mm-hmm. shuts down for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Because I guess too, a lot of the people that are coming in from out of town want to spend the holidays with you. Yeah. Their, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just down the rabbit hole here. <laughs> IMDb links. Peter DeLuise. Yeah. Yeah, he he directed Falling for You. That's super, awesome. Super dope. Guy. You know Peter DeLuise? He was a penhold. I don't know if you watched Twenty One Jump Street. No, no, no. I grew up watching. Well, not grew uh, sorry, up, the television show or the movie? The television show with uh, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Peter DeLuise was uh, played penhold, mm-hmm. and yeah, he was the director for That's that. Cool. He directs a few Hallmarks, actually. Really? Yeah, they do like seventy or some crazy number in a yeah. year. So <gasps> he does a few of them. 
Super, super nice guy. Yeah. Um, worked with him for, I think, like six, seven, seven days or something. And yeah, really cool. <laughs> Have you ever seen 21 Jump Street? The TV show? The TV show. I haven't. That um, used to be my favorite show. You can yeah. get it on DVD. Is it on any of the streaming services right now? I don't know. I don't think it's on Netflix. No, I don't think it's on mm-hmm. Netflix. Yeah. That was such a good show. It should be, though, because the reboot movies made it relevant again culturally mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm, it should mm-hmm. be available there's so many shows that you're like oh people would actually really like to watch this that just yeah. aren't on netflix yeah but i found crave to be a really interesting like surprisingly oh, really? good one oh, okay yeah for like tv shows and interesting yeah. it's funny like when when i think about shows that were filmed in vancouver and mm. stuff and people that i know that have worked with people jackson davies right um mm-hmm. he's a very famous vancouver actor and he worked with one of my Beachcombers. Beachcombers was mm. a big one. Um, Bill Murdoch, one of my acting teachers up at uh, up at Cap Danger Bay, right? You know, like shows like that. You can't watch Beachcombers or Danger <laughs> Bay anymore. Like, where do you where do you find episodes of that? Yeah, one of those like backwards like streaming websites yeah, where like right. you click play, there's like ten ads that pop up. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you can get it at the library. I know one of my. One of my relatives found Littlest Hobo at Littlest at the, Hobo. The littlest Hobo. Yeah. About the dog. That's a that's a great Canadian yeah. television show. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Dog that solves crime. You yeah. ever heard of Littlest Hobo? It, like the name sounds familiar, but I've never seen it. I mean, what a terrible name. Yeah. Littlest <laughs> Hobo, right? But it was about this German shepherd, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, and, and the dog's name was Hobo. Uh huh. And I kind think of it was a kind, German shepherd. Kind of akin to Lassie. Oh, okay. Hobo would um do good things for people who needed it right like oh, okay. this this person is down there like they just got fired and then all of a sudden hobo shows up out of nowhere and uh-huh. hobo helps the person find a job <laughs> like, oh wow like well, almost, and the dog doesn't talk the, yeah uh-huh. the dog doesn't talk it's like <laughs> wait is this animation no or? no a live action show. Oh, live action <laughs> was it littlest hobo wasn't from vancouver was it oh my god uh i, I know it's see. canadian but i don't think it was filmed here it wasn't? That'd be like a Toronto thing. Yeah. It looks... All the scenes looked like BC, I remember. Oh, maybe. Maybe it was only Vancouver. Little as Tobo. Mm-hmm. Hmm. God. Yes. There's so many... So Strange many shows. shows. Yeah, little treasures. Yeah. Yeah. We, it was a simpler time. You can get away with those kind of titles. I was watching a Watch Mojo top ten list for, like, sitcom storylines that would never be done today. <laughs> And they were just some. I was like, "What?" It, it's amazing. Like I, I was watching Friends with my wife because mm. Friends is on Netflix, and some of the early seasons, it surprised me how misogynistic and homophobic some of the episodes mm-hmm. were. I'm like, "Whoa, mm-hmm. that wouldn't fly today." Mm-hmm. Right? No, no. Um, it, yeah, it's amazing how things change over time, and oh, yeah. how how sensitive we were and how sensitive we've become mm-hmm. and how language has changed. Yeah. I mean, it, for the most part in a really good way. Oh, totally. I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying it's a bad thing, mm-hmm. but it is amazing. You can really see how society changes when you watch some of those old shows. Mm-hmm. Really I, the nineties were like, you watch shows from the eighties and everyone was just more careful about what they said. Right. Really? It's, it's almost, really? well, you know, you think about shows like I love Lucy, we're going way uh, back to the fifties. Uh-huh. You couldn't even say pregnant on television. Oh yeah. Oh, you had okay. to be that with child, right. Right? right? Or Fred and Ethel, um, had bunk beds or, or not bunk beds, but twin beds. They couldn't mm-hmm. sleep in the same bed. Right. Um, so, so things were always very censored, mm. but then in the 1990s, things were uncensored, but we were in a less politically correct world. Right. So the nineties are kind of that weird era in television when it seemed like you could get away with almost anything. Oh yeah. There was kind of like, it was super conservative mm-hmm. and then like it went super left yes. and then now we're just kind of like, we're, we're centering. <laughs> yeah. Out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cause like, I guess with the freedom of like, Oh, now we can kind of say whatever. And yeah. it's like, no, 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 yeah. you can't tone it back. People don't like things yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> so Agape you weren't born here you were born in Africa right? I was yeah I was born in uh, the small kingdom of Swaziland Swaziland yeah and like do you can you speak the language um I can uh do you speak with relatives or your parents um, no ever since I was like super young like English has been like my first language mm-hmm. and and, um, how old were you when you came here? Uh, 10? Hmm. Well, what's You're 10. the date? It's like the 6th, right? I came here like November 30th of like 2007. So like, oh. yeah, almost like 11 years now. So wow. I was about 10. Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah. And, um, yeah, ever since I was like a kid, like my family spoke English and Siswati and like, I can Siswati? understand. Siswati? Yeah, Siswati. And I can understand it pretty, probably less fluently than like when I lived there, mm-hmm. but I can still understand it pretty well. And my family does speak it today. Um, but I always responded in English still like then too. It's interesting. Uh, there's a psychological phenomenon known as non-phonating fluency mm. where a person can understand a language, but they can't speak it back. It's like my mm. wife, my wife grew up with all Italian relatives okay. and when she was very little, she actually spoke Italian before she spoke English and born in Canada. Right. But, yeah. but she was very good. And now she can't speak a lick of Italian. They can't <laughs> speak it at all, but can perfectly understand it. Right. Which is uh, very that's, interesting. I mean, I was, I spoke Mandarin. That mm-hmm. was my first language with my parents. Mm-hmm. But as soon as we hit, um, <clears throat> As soon as I got to high school, they started speaking more English, and then I just totally lost it. But yeah. I can still understand perfectly. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing, right? And, like, I mean, if I was put in – I'm going back this this winter, oh, and, cool. like, I, I, I if I'm put in a situation where I'm like, oh, I have to speak Siswati, like, I I will do it. But it will just you, sound like – Have you been back a few times? Uh, I've only been back once in, like, 2012. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah. this is big. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, like – Do so you still have family there? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I have cousins, uncles. Uh, my grandmother's still there. Cool. Yeah. So, like, the rest of my family, other than, like, my immediate family. Family still mm-hmm. there, um, so well, if you don't mind me asking, yeah, what, yeah. what prompted the move? Like, um, what, what brought you to Canada? I think, like, I was I was ten, so like I wasn't part of the you know decision process. Course, yeah, I yeah, just yeah. kind of like came along, but I think it was just to come to a better place, mm-hmm. a different place. Um, you know, different things going on. Uh, Swaziland's a weird place just because it is a kingdom, mm-hmm. and unlike the British uh, monarchy. It's uh, the king in Swaziland has absolute power. So mm-hmm. literally, like, I mean, I'm sure he can't, but like, he, it almost seems like he can, like, say, like, he wants something and it happens, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, the queen, you know, basically has no power. Um, he has all the power. So there's just a lot of different, like, um, problems that come with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not even fully aware of what they are because I, I was a kid, right? Um, I'm sure I'll like have my eyes wide open when I'm there. It's still like that now. Oh yeah. It's still, it's still a full kingdom. Mm -hmm. Um, same King, same um, King. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It stays within the family. He's got like, I think he's stopped now, but like, he's got like 13 wives, you know, 13 (laughs) wives. Like, or at least when I left, he had like 12 or something. And I heard he got like maybe a couple more, but I think he's stopped now. (laughs) He's like in his fifties or like late forties. So he's got to slow down, (laughs) but yeah, he got, and then he's got kids in the States and you know, Europe, like he's, he's rich. Like he's got all this money, you know, but, um, what does Swaziland have that, um, could make him rich? Yeah, like what? What, what, what is Swaziland or, like? Yeah, um, exports. I think we have we have a lot of sugar cane, mm-hmm. and um, like that was a big thing. Like everywhere, it's just mm-hmm. like you could just eat, you could just get sugar cane anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Mm. Um, and I think he has a lot of money too, just because um, a lot of uh, loaning from like other countries, you know, mm-hmm. borrowing and just spending it however he wants. So, um, yeah. Just, like, corrupt things like that, you know, Mm -hmm. like, getting money from other countries and then them, I guess, like, getting something out of the country and then him just using that to... Mm -hmm. He bought, like, a private jet or something, so, like... Of course. He's the king. Yeah, of course, right? You've got to at least... If I was a king, I'd have a private jet. (laughs) Right? for sure. You've got to live the life, you know? You've got to do the thing. If I was a king, I wouldn't settle for the honey wagon. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You talk to your people and make sure, you know, you're not... You have to act like a king. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you know, and but is, I mean, is it safe there? Is it? Like, oh yeah, it's 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 pretty... organized. Do does transit work or like what is it like there? It works. It like living there? <laughs> There's definitely like a system and a way of life that like. Um, I mean, I I think I remember ever since I was like in grade two, I took like the transit to go to school, and like my mom would drop me off at the at the place, and like from. You know, it was one time I fell asleep on the bus. That was a bad day because <laughs> I had like, this country so small. You could like drive to the other end. And I ended up like somewhere like ridiculous. I don't even remember where it was. I don't know how I got home, but I ended up home. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm, my geography is so poor mm. with the African continent. What borders Swaziland? Oh, like what? Fun. Oh, I'm wearing uh, a hoodie with the 
You've got, got a map on your hoodie. Yeah. Yeah. So it's right here, actually. So oh, okay. It's kind South. of it's the South African area. Yeah, exactly. yeah, and you're actually surrounded by South Africa. Yeah, except yeah. for this like uh, northeast, mm-hmm. um, where it's Mozambique. Gotcha. Yeah, so we're landlocked. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just a lot of South Africa and a little bit of Mozambique. Mm-hmm. We were playing this uh, game during parent teacher interviews. Mm. It was a geography <laughs> game. Yeah. yeah. And so you, I forget what it's called. What was it called? Oh, it was just on a website called jetpunk.com. Yeah. So mm. you go there and you, you have to type in every country you can think of and uh-huh. it, and it like, basically it. lights up the map. Oh, okay. With the ones that you get uh-huh. perfectly spelled and everything. Yeah. And, we did a lot of the continents, Europe and North America, of course, and mm-hmm. other places. But then we we noticed that Africa was like nearly <laughs> blank. It was uh-huh. like, oh, countries in Africa, we knew a few, like Uganda and yeah, whatnot, yeah. South Kenya. Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're like, so uh, Mr. Mr. Kim came by, I think. He was like, "What are you guys doing?" <laughs> it's like uh, we're trying to get these countries. So he sits down. Oh, okay. He proceeds to name every single country in Africa. No way. Um, like, Unbelievable. Like, that's sick. what? Yeah. That is super sick. Amazing. Yeah. Well, he's very well traveled. I bet he's oh, been he to is. a lot of those countries. Yeah. So he's... And like tiny countries he was naming all over the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Island all the nations. Islands in the Caribbean that we didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, there there's some little ones like the one I'm from. Um, I think we have a population of Plus minus like a million, wow. you know, and uh, I mean, I don't know the square kilometers or whatever. I can't tell you how big it is, like yeah, literally, but, but... But like population size, that sounds almost like the population of Vancouver almost. Right? Yeah, I mean, like I think it's about the size of like maybe Vancouver Island or maybe hmm. like, like more or less if you like morph the island yeah, yeah, yeah. look like it. It might um, turn out to be the same size. And uh, it's pretty well developed? Um... Eh. Ish, not really. It's still a developing country, mm-hmm. um, but it's very. It's got it's got its own like rhythm and lifestyle. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's very. It's very. What's cool. the capital city? Um, Babane. Babane. Yeah, Babane, which is where I was born. Um, there are like high rises and stuff. Oh, I couldn't tell you. Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, uh, maybe when I go back, I'll like know more. I, there yeah. are like taller buildings, and you know, yeah. especially yeah, I guess in the capital city and. Uh, uh, one of the bigger cities, uh, Manzini. It's like it's like it's a it's a it's a pretty booming city. Now, how how protected is the king? Like, do people meet the king, or is that um, like a, a thing that happens, or is he like super well guarded and nobody talks to the king? I think he's pr- decently well guarded. I yeah. mean, I could. I, there's this like kind of place where you know he is. Yeah. Kind of guess like Buckingham. Yeah, yeah. Where it's just like yeah, you know that's the where, the, where king the king lives. Is. Yeah. So the name of Swaziland is actually Eswatini? Yeah, Eswatini. Um, Eswatini. That's, that's the new name. The, the new name? The new old name. So before... <laughs> oh, they went back. Yeah. yeah, before the British colonizers came, it was Eswatini, which basically means like the place of like Swazi or whatever. Mm-hmm. So then like when the English came, they were like, oh, Swaziland. So the <laughs> land of Swazi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then now the king last this year at some point was just like, I'm changing the name. Because I back. can. Yeah. yeah, to Eswatini, which is cool, I guess. But like now... And I guess, like, when you see Swaziland, the first thing you think is Switzerland. Yes. Or, like, you know, one of those things, right? So it kind of sets it apart in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah. Like, Burma is now Myanmar. Right? Is it? Oh, yeah, countries mm-hmm. change their names. Wow. Myanmar. Well, it's beautiful. Is it? <laughs> no, it's it's a very nice place. Um, very uh, agricultural. And um, I remember near the village where my grandmother lived, they were just like animals like uh, okay. almost everywhere like obviously controlled but like you know there'd be a dude like walking like a herd of cows at a certain time and yeah just super simple and it's 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 really nice That's i like cool. that mm-hmm. that'd be a good trip it is yeah i'm super excited so when do you go uh, i leave uh, in about a month like december 6th a yeah long trip uh no i come back it's about three, three and a half weeks. That's not bad. Yeah, come back end of end of December. Yeah, if you're flying halfway across the world, you might as well spend a few weeks. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's their summer, so oh. I know. <laughs> yeah, because like literally southern hemisphere. Yeah. So it's it's their summer, so that's gonna be super. That's nice. gonna be nice. Yeah, that's gonna be nice. How Jealous. hot does it get? Do you know? Um, the summers can get at least when I was there. I remember K 
getting to like low thirties, like thirty-three, thirty-four. Yeah, I think I think it can even reach like thirty-eight if it's like mm-hmm. really bad. I could mm-hmm. I could go for that right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right now, but when you're there, you're like, ah. Oh. Yeah, well, I, I wish that, I wasn't here. That's the typical here. Vancouver at, uh, attitude, right? Yeah, yeah always complaining about the weather. It's too hot. It's too rainy. It's too cold. Yeah. yeah, and I think if I remember correctly, I don't think that the heat there is humid or as humid. Yeah. So it's it's really it's dry a nice heat. Day. Yeah, it's, I, I prefer I think just because mm-hmm. when you're mm-hmm. indoors, you're not like sweating. You're oh, right. I love dry heat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't doesn't feel as hot. Like it's it's mm-hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. It's nice. Yeah. yeah, it's not thirty. Feels like fifty two. It's yeah. like thirty. It's thirty. If there's yeah. a breeze, the breeze will feel nice yeah so any uh projects coming up what's your game plan for the near future plan. um <laughs> so in 2019 so in like two months <laughs> um yeah i know i'm just looking to do the same thing um hoping to uh tap my foot in la um we were talking a little bit about that just because um you know People do that. Of get course. Because it's LA. Well, you yeah. got to know, you gotta know people LA. everywhere, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The business is often not what you know, but who you know. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And I'd love to, you know, you know, even work in like Toronto. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just kind of broaden my horizons, work elsewhere. Cool. And yeah, just keep having Good fun for you. doing it. Living yeah. the dream. Uh, yeah, living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, it was good having you for this podcast. Yeah. So thanks, thanks for, for coming in. Enough. Kicking off our, our podcast year. Yeah. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. Uh, podcast number one of 2018-19. You're number one. Number yes. one. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Agape. Yeah. See you guys around. Take care.